We're going to remind ourselves about how we solve linear equations and we're going to start off in a scenario where we do it sort of practically thinking of it using boxes and suites um, like we did in previous grades. Imagine that in this time I've given Lulu a box and four suites and I have given Dan two boxes and two suites. And my question is how many boxes, how many suites are there in a box? So Lulu has the amount of sweets in a box, plus four extra, and Dan has got two lots of sweets in a box, plus two extra. All right, remember what I said, we look at who's got the most boxes, we're going to leave them with boxes, and we're going to leave the other person just with sweets. So let's get rid of Lulu's box. So Lulu's box goes, and to be fair then, I must take a box from Dan as well. What have I done equation-wise? I have taken Lulu's box, so I need to take Dan's box away. And so what do I have left? Lulu has four sweets, and Dan has the amount of sweets in a box, plus two sweets left. Now, I want to leave Dan just with boxes, so I'm going to take his two sweets away. But remember, I have to always be fair. So if I've taken two of his, I must take two of Lulu's. Equation-wise, what have I done? Because I took Dan's two sweets, I must take Lulu's, two of Lulu's sweets. And so what I'll be left with, well, Dan will just have the number of sweets in a box. And Lulu is left with two. And so that immediately tells us that inside this one box, there have to be two sweets because we're absolutely fair. What we have, what Lulu has, Dan has. So that gives us our first principle of equations again. What I do to the one side, I must do to the other. If I give Dan some boxes, I must give Lulu some boxes the same number of boxes. If I give Dan a suite, I must give Lulu a suite. If I give Dan two suites, I must give Lulu two suites. If I take three suites from Dan, I must take three suites from Lulu. What you do to one side of the equation, you must do exactly the same thing to the other side of the equation to keep them equal. The other thing that we learned was that we use inverse operations to undo or get rid of the things we need to get rid of in the equation. So, Let's look at an equation like this one. 7x plus 3 is equal to 3x plus 15. We look and see which side. We, our, our job is to work out what x is equal to, right? We look and see which side has got the most x's. And it's this side, right? It's got 7 times x. So we're going to leave... Try and leave x's on this side and get rid of all the x's on the other side. And we're going to try and get rid of all the numbers from the side and leave all the numbers on that right-hand side. So let's start. I want to get rid of all the x's from here, just like I wanted to get rid of all the boxes from Dan. So to get rid of three x's, I need to subtract three of them. And so if I'm going to do that to that side, to be fair, I've got to do it to this side. So what will I have left here? I will have 4x's plus 3, and here I'll just have 15. Now, I want to get the x's on their own. I want to get boxes on their own on this side. So I need to take away 3. So I need to take away 3 from that side to be completely fair. And so I will have 4x is equal to 12. Now I want to get x by itself. Now you should be able to immediately see what x will be equal to because 4 times x gives you 12. So obviously x is 3. But let's imagine we didn't see that and let's just go with the whole inverse operation idea. Right, if I haven't written an operation, what is it? It's 4 times x, right? Remember we write 4x when we actually mean 4 times x. So our operation is times. 
What's the inverse operation of times? It's divide. So we need to divide this side by 4. And if we do that to this side, we must do it to the other side. And then we would get x is equal to 12 divided by 4, which is 3. And we've solved our equation. OK, I want you to try this example for yourself. Pause the video now, do it in your homework books, and we'll go over it. All right, so hopefully you saw. You've got the large number of x's on this side, so we're going to leave x's on this side and get rid of all the numbers from here, and we're going to get rid of all the x's from this side. I mean, it doesn't really matter which way around you do it, but what you always want to do is leave one side with only x's and the other side with only numbers. And it just is easier if you leave the x's where there's a bigger number of x's. Okay, so our first step is to maybe try and get rid of all the x's from here. So what we're going to do is we are going to subtract x. And if we do it to one side, we do it to the other. And we're left with that. And here we're left with 2x plus 2. Now, here we want to get rid of the numbers from this side now. So to get rid of the plus 2, we've got to do its inverse operation, which is subtract 2. So we must subtract 2 from this side, and we will get 2x is equal to negative 7. Now we've got to do the inverse operation here to get x on its own. So it's 2 times x, so we've got to divide by 2. And so we divide here by 2, and what we'll get is x is equal to minus 7 over 2, which is minus 3 and a half if you want to write it like that. Okay, a last example. Um, same story as always. We look and we see where they're the most x's. Well, there's an x here, and remember, x over 2, that's really just, all right, x over 2, if you think about it, x over 2 is just a half x, right? So the most x's are on this side, so we're going to aim to get x's on this side and numbers on that side. Doesn't really matter whether you do it where the biggest a lot of x's are, it just makes it easier if you do, but the main thing is you want to have only x's on one side of the equation and only numbers on the other side of the equation. We're going to get rid of this x here, so we want to subtract the half x. And if we subtract from that side, to be fair, we've got to subtract it from this side. So what is x minus half x? It's just going to be you've got one whole x minus half an x. You're going to have half an x left. And so you've got half x minus 3. Obviously, here you'll just have one left. Now, remember, we want to have x's only on this side, numbers only on this side. So we've got to get rid of this number. So we've got we've subtracted 3. We've got to do the inverse operation, which is to add 3. And if we do it to this side, we do it to that side. And so what we'll get is that half x is equal to 4. But we didn't want half x. We want x. So what have we got here? We've got x being divided by 2. So we need to do the inverse operation which is to multiply by 2. And if we multiply that side of the equation, and sorry, I should write this a bit more clearly, it's the whole side of the equation that I want to multiply by 2. I then have to multiply that side by 2. 2 times a half x is just going to leave me with plain old x, and 4 times 2 is 8. So my answer is that x is 8.